الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله today we're going to start the kitab الورقات في أصول الفقه this book is written by a sheikh from the sheikh of the sheikh from the sheikh of the shafi'i madhab. His name is Abu Ma'ali Abdul Malik Ibn Abdullahi Ibn Yusuf Ibn Muhammad Al-Juwaini. And he is ascribed to Ila Juwain, which is a uh, it's a Nawahi uh, of Naysabur. It's the outskirts of Naysabur. He was born the year 419 Hijriya. And he took knowledge from his father when he was young. And Warahala Ila Baghdad, he went to Baghdad. After that, he went to Mecca. And he stayed in Mecca for four years. And then he went to Medina and he gave fatwa and, and he taught in Medina. And because of that, he earned the name Imamul Haramain. Haramain meaning Mecca and Medina. After that, he went back to Naysabur. Um, the wazir, the minister of Naysabur, he built for him a, a madrasa and he taught there. The great noble scholars of that time used to come. Abu Mu'ali al Juwaini, they said he was very weak in hadith, very, very weak. That from the Ummaha to Sitta, he didn't know any of the hadith in it. None of them. He had no knowledge of all the six books. They said he only memorized Sunan al Darami. It's the only book he memorized. He was weak in hadith. They said that, um, or in his book, Nihayatul Matlab fi Dirayatil Madhab. Nihayatul Matlab fi Dirayatil Madhab, which is a, bo a big book. He wrote, they said that he did not narrate one hadith in Sahih al Bukhari or Muslim, or even in Abi Dawood or Tirmidhi or Ibn Majah or Nasai. Except one time he brings a hadith, ascribes it to Bukhari, and it's not even in Bukhari. So in the field of hadith, he was very weak. And he was from, he was affected by Madhab al-Ahl al-Kalam. He was Ash'ari in Bab al-Asma' wa sifat Because he used to read the book of Abi Hisham al-Mu'tazili. But he came back from his Madhab in which he was upon and came back to the Madhab al-Salaf. In regards to the names and the attributes of Allah, as Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in his, in his uh, Majmu' al-Fatawa. Even he himself clearly mentions his aqeedah in Babu al-Asma'i wa sifat in his Risala, Risala al-Nazamiyya. This is what he says. He says, وَالَّذِي نَرْتَضِيهِ رَأْيًا That which we are pleased in terms of you. وَنَدِينُ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَقْدًا إِتِّبَاعُ سَلَفِ الْأُمَّةِ and that which we make our religion is to take the Salaf of this Ummah as our, our, our leaders. فَالْأُولَى فَالْأُولَى The first thing is الْإِتِّبَاعِ is to follow. وَالْدَلِيلُ السَّمْعِيُّ الْقَاطِعِ فِي ذَلِكَ أَنَّ إِجْمَاعُ الْأُمَّةِ تُحُجَّةٌ مُتَّبِعَةٌ وَهُوَ مُسْتَنَدٌ مُعَظَّمٌ فِي الشَّرِيعَةِ And that, we need to, the evidences clearly indicate that the consent is something that should be followed. So he is saying to you here what? That I follow the Salaf of this Ummah and I follow the consent of theirs. And Babu al Asma'i wa Sifat, the Sahaba and the Tabi'in and the Tabi'in tabi are on unanimous agreement that Allah's characteristics are, should or should be affirmed uh, as He affirmed it for Himself. And, that, and the way His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed it for Him. Um, Abu Mu'ali al Juwayni, rahimahullah, He died the year 478. He died in Aysabur. He has many books. He has many. 
in aqidah he has books in usul al-deen he has books in usul al-fiqh he has book book books in fiqh inshallah bidnillah al-kareem the sharah the explanation that we plan to take is the explanation of Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan. His sharah is what we're going to rely on, inshallah. So anything we bring, the majority of it is going to be from his book. He done it in a way which is very simplified, which is very, mashallah, clear and easy. He didn't mention too much unnecessary things. He simplified it very well. In the beginning, before he goes into the matter of the kitab, uh, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan, he mentions the mabadi ilm usul al-fiqh. Matters that a person should learn about any field they want to learn. Any field that you want to learn, there are mabadi in which a person has to know and they are ten. And the person should know it. They, those ten are mentioned in three lines of poetry which is as follows. إِنَّ مَبَادِئَ كُلَّ فَنْ كُلَّ عِلْمٍ عَشَرَةٌ الْحَدُّ وَالْمَوْضُوعُ ثُمَّ الثَّمْرَةُ وَنِسْبَةٌ وَفَضْلُهُ وَالْوَاضِعُ وَالْإِسْمُ لِاسْتِمْدَادُ حُكْمُ الشَّارِعُ مَسَائِلُ وَالْبَعْضُ بِالْبَعْضِ اكْتَفَى وَمَنْ دَرَ الْجَمِيعَ حَازَ الشَّرَفَ The ten are one. The definition had. The definition of usul al-fiqh. Usul al-fiqh's definition is as follows. علم يبحث في أدلة الفقه الإجمالية وكيفية الاستفادة منها وحال المستفيد. It is a field which inside that field we will research general evidences, أدلة إجمالية. Also وكيفية الاستفادة منها and how we will benefit from the text and how we will benefit from the text and also وحال المستفيد. And the uh, mufti, the, uh, sorry, the mujtahid and his conditions. Those are the three things that usul al-fiqh deals with. Oh, sorry, or its definition is. What is it, what it's, it, what is it, the mawdu' and the subject, what is it about? It talks about al-adillatul musilatu ila ma'rifatu ahkam al sharia Evidences that allow you to reach. Coming to understand the jurisprudent rulings that sharia has passed. Its types, the ikhtilafat that have come, the disagreements that have come, how to benefit from those texts. Knowing the situation of the mujtahid, the person of high caliber and understanding. The third one is thamaratuhu wa fa'idatu. What are the benefits that a person picks, uh, that a person learns? First one is al qudra al istimbat al ahkam al sharia. The ability to extract jurisprudent rulings ala usus in salima based upon foundations that are pure. Lidalika Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, In al maqsuda, the intent min usul al fiqh, the intent behind usul al fiqh is an yufqaha muradullahi wa rasulihi bil kitab wa sunnah. The intent behind usul al fiqh is what? is to understand Allah's intent and his messenger in the kitab and the sunnah. That's what Surah Al-Fiqh teaches you. It allows you to understand what Allah intends by this. It also allows you to understand what the messenger sallallahu meant by this. The second benefit it has is the person who learns Surah Al-Fiqh, he has ma'rifah to anna shari'at al-islamiya salihatun li kulli zaman wa makan. That the Islamic shari'a, it is good for every time and every place. That the Sharia, it is good for every time and it's good for every place. The third benefit that it has is Al Alimu bil Usul, the person who has true knowledge and understanding of Usul al Fiqh, Yash'uru, he starts to feel bi thiqqa, he starts to feel that he can rely and trust. And he finds tranquility in his heart. لِمَا دَوَّنَهُ فُقَهَاءُ الْإِسْلَامِ In that which the scholars of this religion have basically transmitted to us. They will, he will find thiqa in his heart, trust and tranquility towards their works. And that he will come to know وَأَنَّهُ مَبْنِيٌ عَلَىٰ قَوَاعِدَ ثَابِتَةٍ مُقَرَّرَةٍ شَرْعًا 
mumahasatin bahtha. He will come to learn that their principles that they were coming up from and that they were using it is basically principles that are firm and strong, that are purified and cleared. He, we can retrust the scholars. Also, the fourth benefit is معرفت حكم الشريعة وأسرارها. You start to learn the wisdom and the secrets that are in the Sharia by learning what مقاصد التشريع, the intent of legislation. And you also learn what وكيفية الموازنة. And you will also learn to weigh between المصالح والمفاسد, the good and the harm. من مقاصد الشريعة you learn it. Finally, which is the fifth point, fifth faida or benefit, is that the benefit of usul al-fiqh is not only laysat qasira ala al-fiqh faqat, that it's not laysat, laysat al-faida min ilm usul al-fiqh qasira ala al-fiqh faqat, that the benefit inside usul al-fiqh is not exclusive to fiqh only. So meaning, if a person learns usul al-fiqh, he cannot only benefit in usul al-fiqh. No, no. Bel tata'addahu ila ghayri. Rather, it transmits and trans, uh, moves on to ulum, other sciences, such as tafsir, hadith, tarikh, and other than that. The person can apply it there as well. So that was the second point, which is the benefits that are in usul al-fiqh. The fourth is, the fourth point, is wa nisbatu ila ghayri. How is usul al-fiqh in accordance to what? The other fields. A meaning, how is its level? A martabatu min al-ulum al-ukhra in comparison to the other fields. We say, innahu min al-ulum al-shari'ah. First of all, it is from the sciences of the sharia that serve, that serve the deen. And it's as what ulama called ulum al-wasail. It is called what? Ulum al-wasail. The sciences which are the means. That science which are means, what do they serve? They serve three things. The, the sciences which are means, the wasail, it serves al-kitabu and the sunnah and the fiqh. The kitab and the sunnah, the Quran, the hadith and the fiqh, those three. All the other sciences, they serve those three. The Quran, the hadith, huh? and, the sun, uh, and the Quran. The Quran, the hadith and fiqh. All the other wasail, they're serving those three. Are you with me? Pay attention. Usul mm al-fiqh, -hmm. it serves who? Fiqh. Mustalah al-hadith serves what? Hadith. Usul al-tafsir serves what? Quran. Quran. Pay attention. Lughat al-Arabiyyati serves all of them. It serves all of them. Now, that doesn't mean if a person learns usul al-fiqh, he can't move on to... No, he has a good understanding in terms of tafsir. It helps him there as well. So the benefit, mashallah, it goes all, all the way. وَفَضْلُهُ The virtue that is in it. The virtue that is in it is that the great noble hadith that's in Sahihain, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا Anyone who Allah wants good for him, يُفَقِهُ فِي الدِّينَ Allah makes, gives him fiqh in the religion. Now the fiqh, some people thought it meant only fiqh of the religion. You mean learning fiqh only. It doesn't mean that. Fiqh means understanding of the whole sharia, aqeed, hadith, everything. If Allah wants good for you, he makes you understand that. Number six, who is the person who placed this field? Uh, as Imam uh, uh, Sahib Maraq al-Su'ud said, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ صَنَّفَ وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ محمد بن الشافع المطلب وغيره كان له سليقة مثل الذي للعرب من خليقة The first person who placed it was who? محمد بن الشافع المطلب الإمام الشافعي He was the first person وذلك بتأليف كتاب الرسالة And that which is that He mentioned that in his كتاب الرسالة He mentioned that in his كتاب الرسالة The seventh which is the What's the name of this field? What is the name of this field? The name of this field is called Usul al-Fiqh. Uh, Ilm Usul al-Fiqh. That's what it's called. Ilm Usul al-Fiqh. Istimdad. Where is it rooted from? Where, is, where, where does it stem from? 
It stems from three places. من ثلاث أشياء. One, علم التوحيد. And that is what? It is the ahkam of the sharia, first of all, is to know Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And was sidq rasooli, and that the Prophet is truthful. Alayhi salatu wa salam. That which he brought to you. Prior to that person has to have aqeedah, believe in the messenger. He has to believe in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. If a person doesn't believe in Allah and his messenger, and has no knowledge of him, Will they go into understanding what their speech is? Or will usul al-fiqh huh, be rooted from, from, uh, from, a, from something that is based on shirk? لا أبدا. It's tawheed. The second one is علم اللغة العربية. The Arabic language. So that is what? فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ الْأُصُولِ It is obligatory. It is required for a person who is going to this field, usul, uh, that he has with him قدرا صالحا من من اللغة. He has a great portion of the language. يتمكن به معرفة الكتاب والسنة. In which he can be able to understand the kitab and the sunnah. Why? لأنه ما بلسان عربي. Because both of them, the kitab and the sunnah, are in which, which language? In Arabic language. The third place it's rooted from is أحكام الشريعة. أحكام الشرعية. It is rooted from the uh, the, uh, the rulings and the and, uh, the rulings of the Sharia. Again, a person has to have a great portion of fiqh in order to study usul fiqh. He needs to know a bit of fiqh. Huh? So when examples are brought, he can understand them. When examples are used, he can say, I, I know where you're coming from. But if the person doesn't have no understanding of fiqh, he will, he will find it hard to study usul fiqh. What is the ruling? Huh? What is the ruling of learning usul fiqh? It is furud, fardu uh, kifaya. Uh, it's, it's, it is the ulum which are furud kifaya. It is, it's, إِذَا قَامَ بِي بَعْضٍ سَقَطْ عَنِ الْبَاقِينَ If some people stand up and do it, the rest don't have to do it. So it's not obligatory on every single person. But the scholars, they mention, أَنَّهُ فَرْضُ عَيْنٍ It becomes obligatory on individuals. مَنْ أَرَادَ الْإِجْتِهَادِ Anyone who wants to do ijtihad. Or he wants to give fatwa. And he wants to give, it's obligatory now on him. Huh. At the beginning, you could have just been from the general math. But now you're going to universities, you're giving lectures, and you're talking, and you're answering questions and everything. What do you need? You need the soul al-fiqh. Obligatory, fardu'ayn. As Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, mentions, uh, sorry, Ali Taymiyyah mentioned in kitab al-muswadda fi usul al-fiqh. Again, masailu, what are the issues that usul al-fiqh fall under? Which is the last, nine, tenth point. Tenth point. The masail and the mabahith that fall under it is is al-mujtahid, you learn the person who is a mujtahid, his conditions and his characteristics. You learn um, you learn the mujtahid, the rules and the regulations in which he also has to follow and how he chooses and how he benefits from the texts. And how he extracts ruling from the Sharia and the places that he picks it up from. Those are the matters in which you see. You see how he does it, then you'll be able to put yourself one day to be able to do that as well. The last point, which inshallah, which is the 11th, Sharafuhu, the honor of this field. Without a doubt, it, it is it is an honorable field. Why? Because of the topic it deals with. The topic that it deals with. It deals with adilla al musila, which we mentioned. Ila ma'arifat al hakam al sharia wa aqsamuha wa aqtilaf al maratibha wa kafiyat al istidlal biha wa ma'ma ma'arifat hal al mustadil. And that is because the person is learning Allah's rules and regulations. That's the honor, Allah's rules and regulations, which is connected to you for you what? Lil fauzi bi saadat al darayni. You're looking to learn and to understand. The rules your creator has passed in that is for you what? The success and the prosperity of this world and the hereafter. So of course it's an honorable field. You're learning this and it's going to be a means for you to be what? To be prosperous and happy and, and earn the, the pleasement of your Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He started his book by saying, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Muqaddimatul Warakat. The kitab that we're starting is Al-Waraqat. 
The author, rahimahullah, he did not start his book with hamdalah. That's the strongest. Um, there are some nusakh, some of the manuscripts that scholars did find, they did find the hamdalah written on it, where he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. But the majority of the manuscripts that have been found, the majority, lam tarud, lam tarid fihi, lam tarid fihi, هذه العبارة. These, the hamdala is not on there. The hamdala is not on there. So, um, um, the strongest is that the bismillah was started with. The sheikh started by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Ba, the ba in that, Bismillah is harf jar. Bismillah. Ism is Ism Majroor. Allah. Alamun ala thati lahi tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah is a name of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. All of the names they go back to it. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names go back to Allah. For instance, you won't say Ar Rahman is Allah. You won't say Al Malik is Allah. Rather, what do you say? Allah is Malik. Allah is Aziz. Allah is Ghafoor. Meaning all names go back to Ar-Rahman. All names go back to uh, Allah, sorry. All names go back to Allah. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, we have two, two choices or two views according to the scholars what they have said. We can make Ar-Rahman ismu that, uh, sifatu dhatiya, sorry. We can make Ar-Rahman sifat dhatiya or we can make it sifat fi'liya. If, it may, if we make it sifa to that, we say Allah is most merciful. Allah is very merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala, most merciful. Um, and then Ar-Rahim becomes sifa fi'liya, meaning Allah is one who surpasses his mercy to his creation. Or what we can say is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, both of them are sifa fi'liya. Both of them are sifa fi'liya. One is specific and one is general. Ar-Rahman is general and Ar-Rahim is specific to the believers. Those are the two views regarding, regarding the basmala, the grammatical analysis of the basmala. Muqaddimatul waraqat, the introduction to al-waraqat. The Shaykh rahimahullah, he said, هذه ورقات, هذه this, Warakatun, it is papers. It is let uh, uh, it is oh, uh, uh, pages. هذه ورقاتن these is pages. تشتمل that consist of in it. على معرفة فصول in coming to know, having understanding and comprehension. فصول فصول is a um, it is a chapter that falls under a bab it is a segment a part that falls under a bab it falls under a bab and we will mention inshallah in details min usul al fiqh from what fusul which are from usul al fiqh now stop there and listen inshallah when the scholars author a book what do they call it pay attention all of you pay attention when the scholars author a book, what do they call it? They call it kitab. And what falls under the kitab? Bab. And what falls under the bab? Fusul. So it's kitab, and then it's a bab, and then within the babs there are fusul, faslun, you hear. Faslun, you see. Fasl, fusul is the plural of fasl. Fasl. So he's saying, هذه ورقات, these are papers, these are pages. Tashtamilu, it consists of ala ma'rifati, in coming to know. Ma'rifa means understanding, uh, comprehending. Fusulin min usul al fiqh. So it's this way, this is how it works. Kitab, bab, fasl, I'm a fasl, and then masail. Masail. So it's kitab, and then you write babs, and then you write fasl. And then you, you and then you write masail, masail. You write you write masail. <coughs> the 
وَذَلِكَ So, these pages that we're going to take, it, what does it consist in it? What does it have in it? He's explaining to us what the book is about. He's saying to us that the book, huh, it has in it, it consists in it, comprehension, ma'rifa, to understand. Meaning in this book of mine, these pages, it's not a book, he didn't call it a book. He didn't call it uh, 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 volumes. He just said pages. What, what, are, what, are, what are you going to find in these pages? Ma'rifat. Coming to know. Fusulin min usul al-fiqh. Fusuls that are in usul al-fiqh. Fusul that are in usul al-fiqh. Small matters which are in usul al-fiqh. You're going to learn. So what are you going to learn? Masail, Mas'ala, 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 which brings you to a fasl. Then you're going to learn this fasl, this fasl, and this fasl, and it's going to bring you to bab. And then you're going to learn this bab, and this bab, and this bab, and you're going to study kitab mustaqil. He is saying to you, my one, it's a masail that come together, that make a fasl. That's what I'm going to teach you in this book. It's not even a kitab. It's just masail that come under and fall under a fasl. You're going to learn. Good. From where? Min usul al fiqh. So the topic and the field that you're going to be studying is usul al fiqh. You're going to be learning usul al fiqh. And we'll take what usul al fiqh uh, means. We'll take what usul al fiqh uh, means. Wa thalika and that is. And that is. That is what? That is usul al fiqh. Mu'allafun min juz'ayni mufradayni. Pay attention now. Usul al fiqh. When defining it. When explaining what it is, there is two ways to look at it. Two i'tibarat, two angles to look at it. One is, بِإِعْتِبَارِهِ بِإِعْتِبَارِ مُفْرَدَيْ بِإِعْتِبَارِ مُفْرَدَيْ Looking at asal and then looking at fiqh individually. What does asal mean? What does fiqh mean? And then after that, بِإِعْتِبَارِ بِإِعْتِبَارِ تَرْكِيبِهِ أما بِإِعْتِبَارِهِ عَلَى مَنْ لِفَنْ The second one is, both of it together. Usul and fiqh together. What does it now mean? That's the way he's going to mention it. He says, وَذَلِكَ and that is, مُؤَلَّفُدْ It is brought together. مِنْ جُزْأَيْنِ From two portions. Two divisions. What are the two divisions? Asal and fiqh. That came together. مِنْ جُزْأَيْنِ مُفْرَدَيْنِ Which are single. Now you're thinking to yourself, Usul is not single. The mufrad he's referring to is not ma yubadul jama. The mufrad sometimes is the opposite to plural. And sometimes is the opposite to a sentence. So he is saying to you here, I'm going to be mentioning it not when it's a sentence, when it's individual word for word. Ah, what do they mean? So this is bi'atibari mufradayi, singularly, just looking at each singly, or soul by itself, analyzing it, fiqh by itself, analyzing what it means. Now, this path in which he took, which is to define usul, are you all with me? This path in which he took, to define usul, and then explain what it means, and then go for fiqh, is the path taken by Imam al-Shirazi. Imam al-Shirazi has a kitab called al-Lum'a. It's usul al-fiqh book. And it's also the path taken by Imam al-Razi. Imam al-Razi. And also Imam al-Baydawi. Al-Razi in his kitab al-Mahsul. And Imam al-Baydawi in his kitab al-Minhaj. Also some scholars, what they took is that they put fiqh before usul. So they defined and they explained what fiqh means first. And then they went to define what usul means. And the scholars that took that path is uh, Al-Ghazali, Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali. He took that path. Uh, he has a book called Al-Mustasfa. Also Al-Amidi in his kitab al-Ahkam, Al-Amidi. In his Kitab al-Hakam, Abu al-Hussein al-Basri, he also mentions that in al-Mu'tamad, and also Abu Ya'la, who also done it in his Kitab al-Uddah. So those are the two ways. Abu Mu'ali al-Juwaini, what way did he take? He, defi- he first is going to define for you what asal, us- usul means, and then what fiqh means. And then he's going to define for you what fiqh by itself means. Okay? Pay attention. Uh, usul by it together. Usul together.